Hey everyone, welcome back to episode four in my Crypto.com Crypto 101 series. I hope that you've learned a lot already in this series. If you haven't, you can see the topics on my screen for the previous episodes. So make sure you check those out. Also, if you're looking for a safe place and an all-in-one platform to buy, sell, exchange crypto, and there's a lot of other features which I share in episode one, uh, make sure you check it out. If you use my link or my promo code, Gooner, you can also get free cash uh, deposited into your account. Today's topic is trading versus investing. Uh, there's a lot of confusion on Twitter about the mindset involved between each, and I think a lot of new people to the space or new people to investing get confused and they can't differentiate the two. So that's what I'm here to do today, and I hope that it becomes more clear to you guys and that you learn something from this, and let's get into it. Of course, as with everything, none of this is financial advice. I just share things that I've learned and things that I find useful, and if some of it resonates with you, that's great. What is investing? Well, the Webster Dictionary definition is to expend money with the expectation of achieving a profit or material result by putting it into financial plans. The explain it to me like I'm five definition is basically buying something in hopes that you'll be able to sell it for a higher value than what you bought it for. Simple enough, right? All right, so an investing overview. I personally think that financial advisors are very underrated. I highly recommend getting one, uh, especially if you are working with more money than you're used to working with. It's good to have a financial advisor to help you plan for the future and make sure that you're allocating your assets appropriately um, and safely to make sure that you know once you retire, you have the proper funds to make it throughout. Portfolio diversification is all encompassing. Um, so it's not just one asset, it's not just your funds in one place, you should be thinking about the whole picture, all of your income, income sitting in your bank account, your assets, stocks, bonds, um, cryptocurrencies, of course, uh, trusts, commodities, 401k, physical assets, as I mentioned. So this is all your portfolio. It's one big thing. And wherever your money is, whether it's in crypto or stocks or wherever, um, that should all be considered into one big portfolio and you should think of each individual allocation as a certain percentage of your overall net worth. So as your net worth grows, you're likely to start diversifying into different avenues, different spaces, different asset classes, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Property is a common one that people start to invest in after they have made some expendable income, but there's many different ways you can invest and diversify. I do want to hit home that investing is always risky. There is risk involved. Now, there is risk involved with letting your money sit in a bank as well, um, deflationary asset aspect of that, uh, but we won't get too far into that. Um, but Anything you're investing can go to zero. There's always potential for that. So you should not risk more money than you're willing to lose in any individual investment. Um, understand that your investment plan will be different than someone else's. We all have financial situations that are different, uh, family situations, etc. So whatever somebody you see online uh, or me or anybody else doing might not be what's right for you. Um, so that's why I said I recommend a financial advisor to help you figure out what is best for you and um, what suits your lifestyle and financial needs best. So again, you shouldn't be investing off what other people are doing. Um, you should only maybe take small p tidbits away from that, small pieces, things that you like and make it developed or make a developed strategy um, that's right for you. So why do we invest? Well, to make your money work for you. Uh, money sitting in your bank account is depreciating over time as inflation occurs. Uh, dividends, rewards, annual percentage yield, etc. cetera. Um, you will see a lot of APYs uh, out there in crypto. And not only that, on crypto.com, you can get APYs, uh, which I also explain in my first video. To reduce your taxable income, save for retirement, and for new experiences. Um, new experiences can be uh, investing in real estate or you know, maybe buying or investing in a company of some sort or a bar or a restaurant, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many new opportunities uh, that come about when you have extra funds available to invest in your interests. 
is investing right for you? Investing is for everyone. All right. I really truly believe that investing is for everyone, uh, but a lot of people don't go about it necessarily the correct way. So I think education and research is extremely important if you are wanting to invest. Um, and you should also understand high risk versus low risk investment pro profiles uh, to fit your needs and your specific risk aversion. Make sure to find investments that meet your interests um, and research, research, research. Always important to know what you're investing in. Investing tips. Never go all in on any single asset. This is a huge no-no. Not only are you overexposed, uh, but if that asset is going sideways or dropping, then it can take an emotional toll on you. So diversification, as I mentioned earlier, is the best avenue for investment. Nothing is ever a certainty, which is also another reason to not go all in on one asset. Uh, no matter what your confidence level is on an asset or an investment, um, if you put all your eggs in one basket, there's always the chance for it to fail, even if you don't think it will in a million years and you're so confident about it that you're going to risk everything, there is that chance it can fail and I've seen it happen. Um, so I can't stress enough that going all in on any one investment or asset um, is very, very dangerous. Dollar cost averaging is the easiest way to invest in stocks and crypto. What dollar cost averaging is, is basically just buying a small amount daily or weekly, monthly, however you choose. Uh, and you're not really caring about the price. You're assuming it's going to go up over time and appreciate over time. And you also assume you're not going to trade. You're not going to buy the exact bottom, which is very unlikely anyway. So you're just buying and if the price goes down, you don't really mind. You're buying a little bit more. And if you bought higher, as you keep buying, the value, or sorry, the average value or the average price you got in is going to come down over time if that price keeps dropping. So then if it inevitably goes back up, you know, you're getting your cost basis lower and your average buys are lower. I think I said the same thing five times there. As I just mentioned, don't expect to buy the bottom of an asset. It's extremely hard to time the exact bottom. So sometimes if you think it's getting close to the bottom, then it's best just to start slowly getting some buys until you understand how to confirm an actual bottom has formed. Also understand high risk versus low risk investments and how much of your portfolio you want to diversify into each. Generally speaking, you're going to want to put a lower percentage of your portfolio into high risk investments. And what high risk investments are, are investments that have the potential to, you know, do a three, four, five, six, seven, you know, a large percentage return, but they also have the potential to do a large percentage loss. So maybe go down as much as 50% or even 90%. And for that reason, that's why you would want to have the higher risk part of your portfolio be a much smaller portion. Lastly, make a plan and write it down. This can help free you of emotions and make you act on your plan and not do what you're th feeling at the moment. You're just going to be acting upon what you wrote down. Uh, it's a very simple technique. It's kind of like journaling, uh, but it can help a lot, especially when you're dealing with investments. Investing concluded. Investments are typically long-term minded um, over months or years, so you're not expecting an immediate return on your investment. Um, again, do understand that any money you're investing it has the potential for a large drawdown um, and you can lose everything. If you're stressing over any one investment or asset or crypto, whatever it is, then you're most likely overexposed. And as of course, not financial advice, but the easiest thing to do is just to reduce your exposure to that. And of course, don't take financial advice from non-financial advisors. Uh, you can't, they can't legally give you financial advice anyway, uh, but you wouldn't take medical advice from random strangers on the internet with no medical background, hopefully. So you shouldn't be doing that with financial uh, advice either. Investing versus trading. All right, investing is typically lower risk. Trading is typically higher risk, all right? Investments, of course, long-term trading, usually shorter term, maybe days, minutes, hours, all right? So trading, you're usually expecting a much quicker return on your investment. 
Investing relies on an appreciating asset, so you need something that the value is going up over time. Um, with trading, you don't necessarily need an asset to appreciate. Uh, with If you use options or leverage, um, you can trade an asset and make money on, on, on an asset as the price or the value goes down. Trading will also not focus on APY, dividends, returns, etc. Um, you're basically just getting in and out for the price action and the volatility and then moving elsewhere. Uh, of course, if you are trading with leverage um, on crypto exchanges, you should understand uh, about funding and how that works if you are trading. What is trading? Webster's definition uh, of day trading is the buying and selling of securities on the same day, often online on the basis of small short-term price fluctuations. Uh, the explain it to me like I'm five definition is opening a position on an asset with the expectation of profiting shortly um, with no regards to long-term speculation of the asset. All right, trading overview. Risk management is always my number one priority as a trader. Risk management is underrated, and if you do want to trade or decide to trade, you should really understand risk management and how it works. Trading should be considered a complement to investing and not a substitution. Uh, that's my personal opinion. I think that once you've made some money on investing, then maybe recycle some of that money, some of those funds over into a trading account if you desire to trade. And then you're playing with house money already. So if you lose all the money, it's not a big deal uh, because trading is much harder, uh, much higher risk than investing. Leverage is a tool and not a necessity. It's a helpful tool to trade, but you don't absolutely need it. You can make plenty of money spot trading. Um, and if you are just spot trading, uh, which just means buying and selling uh, without leverage, you're only going to be doing that on assets that are appreciating value or going up. But again, leverage is not necessary. A lot of people think the only way to make good money is with leverage trading, and that is false. Trading it requires much more experience than investing. Now, I mentioned earlier that I do think investing is for everyone. Trading, I don't think is for everyone. Trading is also more time consuming than investing. Um, typically with investments, you're going to you know buy it, hold on to it. You don't need to check it all the time. Um, and then eventually, you know, you'll look to cash out after it has appreciated in value. With trading, you're going to be much more hands-on. Um, you're going to be looking at charts more. You're going to be taking a lot more positions, um, a lot more entries, and you're going to have to monitor them a lot more often than an investment. I do understand that over 90% of traders are unprofitable, um, so it's a very high-risk career choice. Is that a good word? Hobby. I'm going to say hobby. So what are the reasons to trade? Well, some people do it because they've already made it and it's a way to supplement extra income or even just a hobby, all right? Uh, maybe they're retired and they just wanna take some funds, throw it into a trading account and just kind of dabble in trading, have some fun, see if they can master it, um, which is fine. Uh, alternatively, maybe they've made a lot of money in their career or investing or whatever and they wanna take some of that profit and roll it into trading and see if they can be successful at it. To make money faster, all right? Remember, I said investing is a long-term minded game and you're gonna be holding a lot longer. Trading is much quicker gratification, much quicker returns if done properly. Um, so that can be one reason people like to do that. It's addictive and feeds your gambling or adrenaline needs. Now that's not the, the good reason to trade, but that is a reason some people trade because it's basically like gambling to them and they get their gambling needs fixed, right? They they need that adrenaline rush. Um, now, if trading is gambling to you, I suggest that you tone it down and understand what trading actually is and what your goals are, what you're trying to accomplish, um, and put some rules in place and some strategies in place to make it more calculated and less gamble-like. Uh, because it looks cool online. A lot of people probably just try to trade because all their friends are doing it, all the people on Twitter are doing it, uh, and they think it's cool, or they see somebody make a lot of money, so they wanna trade too. As a primary source of income, all right? That's why I started trading, that's why I left my job, um, because I didn't wanna work a nine to five anymore and I wanted to work for myself and be able to work from home. Uh, some people just don't understand investing, how it works. They see trading mentioned a lot more online and it seems like a better alternative and a way to make quick money. Is trading right for you? No, trading is not for everyone. 
It is a high risk activity and it should not be taken lightly. It is not easy. For most people, it should be considered a supplementary income to an already profitable venture or career. Are you patient and disciplined or are you more of a gambler? Something you should ask yourself uh, to understand if trading is right for you or not. Trading tips. Understand risk management, discipline, and patience. All right, those are key aspects to trading. Consider it a high-risk diversification of your overall portfolio, right? As I mentioned earlier, think of everything you're doing with your money as part of your portfolio and a little diversification here and there. Um, trading is a high-risk activity, so that should be a lower percentage of your portfolio that's being used for trading. Again, leverage trading is one of the highest risk categories because you can be liquidated or you can lose money extremely fast um, and it is not a necessary tool to be a successful trader. Learn how to find reliable setups that have a high probability of winning, all right, maybe over 50% and plan, be able to plan entries and exits. Understand that if you're trading, you will not be right every time. Um, you will lose trades. Uh, you have to be you ha you have to be able to accept being wrong and not be vengeful for the market when you are wrong. Profit taking is a skill for a trader and also a good habit. If you look down at the chart below, you'll see that for every percentage loss you have on your portfolio, you're going to need a higher percentage gain to make it back. So if you lose 10%. On your portfolio, you're going to have a, need an 11% gain to make it back. If you lose 40%, you're gonna need a 67% gain to make it back, and it just goes up from there. So the bigger your losses are and the more you're losing, the harder it is to get back to a positive PL on your account. Risk management is the most crucial aspect of trading. Understand what you're getting into and that you're very likely to fail. Make rules for yourself and follow them. Don't let emotions control your actions. Don't let trading become an addiction. If you're in a trade and you have no idea what to do next, then you didn't have a plan going into it and you never should have entered that position. Study, study some more. Keep studying, plan, prepare, execute, and practice. Practice, practice, practice. Review your failures. Those are where you're gonna learn the most. Never get too high or low on emotions and stay consistent with everything you're doing. So which is better? Neither is better. They should be used to complement each other. That's my personal opinion. And trading is not usually a good way to start building a large portfolio. Investing is a good way to start building and growing a portfolio, and then trading is a very nice complement to that. Really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please smash the thumbs up, subscribe to my channel above, and stay tuned for my next episode in the Crypto.com Crypto 101 series.